Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador. How are you today? So I pull in my studio and there's two big trucks and they say the name of my internet company. So I came in here thinking, oh no, well, hopefully they don't cut the wrong cord <laughs> because we have a fantastic show for you today. We are live streaming on Brother Facebook and YouTube channels. Now, by the way, if it's like yesterday, Facebook wasn't cooperating. So hopefully those on Facebook will make it over to YouTube. But say hi, say where you're from. It's always nice to see you. And today we've got Chris Talk. He's going to be showing you ways to sew a t-shirt. He's always cool about that. And I can't wait to see the fabric he has today. Because the last t-shirt, I think we were all laughing about that, including himself. <laughs> so say hi, say where you're from. And it's great to see you. Hey, Cindy, I see everybody rolling in. Let's bring Chris up. If you haven't met Chris, he's been on the show before. He's a brother brand ambassador. He's got some very cool things that he makes way outside of my realm. And that's what I love about it. So let's bring Chris up and see how he's doing today. Chris, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me back. It's good to be around again. Hello, everyone. Oh, wow. we love it. So, Chris, you have a book out now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we talked about that last time I was here. Um, right. But in case there's like a new batch of people who haven't met you before, you right. I call you the king of cosplay. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't prepare. Well, I've got a little slideshow that you guys will see while we're doing our thing. But um, there's lots of fun pictures. And I think I got, you can kind of see some of my mannequins over there with three of my costumes. And anyway, you'll see it when it's bigger. But um yeah, I like making costumes and men's clothing. And yeah, I wrote a book on how to work with thermoplastics, if anyone knows what that is. So stuff like Foz Shape and Veriform and Warbler. Um, but yeah, I'm always busy like you are, Angela. Angela and I, I think we got along so well because we realized we both make jeans, which few people do. And um, we enjoyed that about each other, I think. You know, Chris, we have to do a jean. We should do a jean challenge this fall because I need a few new pairs. And uh, I love the fabrics you use. Mm. Yeah, I, I, whatever you have in mind for a challenge. Uh, the last time you invited me to do a project, I was busy with our book. But now I'm I'm available and uh, I, I want in on the next project for sure. <laughs> so, hey, everybody here that's chatting, leave a note if you'd like to join and sew some jeans <laughs> with Chris and I. But Chris, I'm not going to take any more of your time because you're going to show how to sew knits uh, and I'm going to let you take it over because I'm really looking for. Do you remember the last T-shirt that I saw you made? So it was, did it have that, that, was for, it? that wasn't on the brothers. That was for one of the other sponsors. Um, so right. I'm not doing the same thing on the same channel. At least. But yeah, I made, <laughs> well, made a long sleeve sweatshirt out of this hilarious, like happy cloud fabric. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's such embarrassing fabric. I haven't even worn that shirt once since I made it, but it was really funny. Yeah. Um, so, and I know a lot of people in here might've seen it too, because it was on one of the brother dealers page, but, uh, okay. So I can't wait to see your fabric and I'll let you take it away, Chris. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Angela is the best. Um, and actually it's funny when, <laughs> so I think it was yesterday when we were setting up for this, Angela was like, all right, are you ready for your, your stream tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, for sure. What is it? What, what am I doing? What is it called? And she said, uh, the title of the stream was going to be sewing with knits and wovens. And I was like, wait, isn't that just like sewing with all fabric? Isn't that like saying, you know, cooking with plants and animals or something? Um, <laughs> Cause it was just so broad. So I was like, can I just do something specific? Like a shirt. I'm glad you came back to laugh at me for that. I, um, I couldn't resist that. Yeah. But uh, so we're going to make just a simple t-shirt uh, and I'm going to surge it and, you know, I'll get to use my heavy duty and my serger. And then if there's time left, because this doesn't take very long, I've got my vinyl cutter and we can do a little, uh, you know, decal. And in fact, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Um, so this was a shirt that is handmade by me. And when the new John Wick movie came out, I made a John Wick shirt uh, with the Japanese title uh, or the Chinese title, I'm sorry. And then uh, when Spider-Man came out a couple of weeks ago, I made a Spider-Man in black cat shirt which this is maybe a little provocative for this broadcast, but uh, this looks really clean. I, so I'll, I'll do something much simpler because that took a couple hours to weed all this stuff out, but these look really neat. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to make a shirt that looks just like this, and Angela will be disappointed to learn that uh, we're just going to be using a very typical waffle knit, you know, 
knit fabric. Nothing crazy. We're not doing clouds. I, I didn't have anything fun laying around. So um, at least for the sake of this, it will rebroadcast well. And then uh, I can show you guys something that I always kind of struggle with when I'm streaming is I don't know if people want to learn or if they want to be entertained. So I try to do both. But I will, I suppose, cover the steps of what I'm doing while I'm doing it. But um, yeah, so anyway, as Angela was saying earlier, I kind of like her, I do a lot of different things with fabric and lots of other materials, but I like to, you know, fabricate things out of EVA foam and 3D print stuff and, you know, make silicone molds and do resin casting and things like that. But my first crafting love was sewing and that's what we're doing right now so i'm i'm excited um and i'm not going to bother angela too much um or if if at all but i don't know what a jeans challenge means but i'm into it whatever whatever that means to her um, <laughs> well, let him just make it up chris it's like yeah like, make I, it up. I, like i've done sewing <laughs> speed runs before where me and another broadcaster would make like the same pair of pajama pants with the same pattern and whoever finished first won. Um, but like jeans is that, that takes me like four hours to make a pair of jeans. So uh, anyway, Oh, I actually, um, all right, Angela, go back to what you're doing. Uh, I did finish something a couple of days ago that I haven't really gotten to show off, but if anyone's watching, I just finished this bag. I like to make messenger bags. This might be one of the most, polished bags I've ever made. And there's, I think, nine different embroideries that I designed with PE 11 and uh, did all the work on my PR 1055 10 needle machine. So I was really happy how this came together. It's really solid. And I even have a little sword on the strap there, which is cool. But anyway, I was, I was proud of this. And I think I was sharing progress on my Instagram while I was making it and people were noticing and someone said, what are you going to do with that thing? And I said, I don't know, I might sell it. So they bought it while I was still making it, uh, which was pretty cool when you can sell something before it's even finished. So I get to ship that to a friend of mine in Canada this week. Um, anyway, uh, so we're making a t-shirt. I should probably cover that uh, now that we're doing that. Um, thank you, Stitches. But uh, I've got some knit fabric. I just folded it in half uh, along this edge here. Uh, both the front and the back, we will cut along the fold line. And um, I folded it in half on the edge so I'm not wasting fabric. So I just want to make sure nothing is in my way. And I put my pattern weights down. And now I'm just going to simply cut this out with a rotary cutter. And while we're cutting this out, I'm just going to see what you guys are up to in chat, and I'll probably, I don't know, tell some goofy stories. Um, I did see when people were saying hello earlier, there was a couple of people that may have recognized me by my YouTube videos, which is always exciting. Um, in fact, uh, last weekend, I was at an event called Fan Expo Dallas. A friend of mine that works at a local sewing machine shop uh, got my book in stock, and they were like, oh, I know this person. Uh, so anyway, they asked me if I would do a book signing at Fan Expo, which I did. And I, I don't know why I was so surprised by this, but um, <laughs> for whatever reason, uh, a lot of people actually showed up to buy a book and recognized me and were excited to meet me, which... Um, a lot of people think I'm very outgoing when they see my streams or my my videos, but I almost never leave the house. So um, it was really funny that I there was so many people that came up and they wanted to buy a book or introduce themselves or say thank you to me for some of my sewing tutorials, which that's when, you know, this community really comes alive for me is when I get to go to live events and see people face to face, which is really neat. Um, <clears throat> and hello, Lisa and Anne from New Jersey and Virginia, respectively. I really do like to try to be engaging with chat. 
Um, so if you guys are talking, I will probably respond. Um, <clears throat> all right. So anyway, this was the front panel. I'm not doing a great job at explaining. We're, we're just hanging out and having a good time here. So anyway, I probably could have pre-cut this stuff out, but there's only like four or five panels anyway. So this will be pretty simple. Um, I'm very proud that I was prepared for this broadcast, though, because I think the last couple, I just kind of like made everything up as we went along. And it went great, but it's nice to be prepared for once. Um, this fabric is not nearly as wide as my other knits. What's up with that? Oops, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Knits are usually like 56 inches instead of 44, right? Whatever. This will work. <clears throat> um, so if anyone is actually crafting while they're hanging out and watching, please let us know what you're working on. That's something I always like to ask people, um, especially when people say something crazy like, oh, I'm looming fabric or I'm spinning my own wool thread or something. Because those are things I've never even tried before. And I always admire people that are able to do some of those wild old school technique like hand embroidery that's something i've never even tried i don't think i'm patient enough for that uh, but i really respect people that do that kind of work all right <clears throat> let's see oh yes uh stitches so i i have a program uh i don't know if i'm allowed to say what it is even though brother doesn't have a competing program but Anyway, it allows me to draft patterns on a computer using a 3D model of my own body that I, I had a body scan. So I'm able to draft two-dimensional patterns and then map it to my three-dimensional body form. And then I printed this out on my plotter printer because I got tired of, you know, printing it out on regular, like, letter paper and taping it together. So I just bought a bigger printer. So anyway, I did model this T-shirt to my own body and then uh, printed it, which is super overkill for something like a t-shirt, because I could I could easily draft this on paper, but I just wanted to do something completely unnecessary for the sake of this. And, and I made the, the pattern a while ago. Um, I'm sure that was cutting it close. Wait, Cindy, I don't know what we were talking. I have already forgotten what I said two minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> you're inverting baby bibs and cutting out See, that's awesome. And heat transfer vinyl for t-shirts. We might do some, some heat transfer vinyl today if we have time, which I think we could probably do that. Once I get all this cut out, we're just going to start flying right through all the seams. <clears throat> all right. So my two big panels are cut out. We've got our front and our back. I forgot to cut up my notches, but this is such a simple pattern. I'm not even going to worry about it. <clears throat> your machine embroidering in your mind. I like, I like the idea of that. <laughs> For the sake of this conversation, I do that very often uh, when I'm laying in bed where I'm like, hmm, what could I make tomorrow? Or what, what video should I film? And I'll just sit there and think about, I was doing it last night. There's a, there's a bag I want to make. So I was trying to plan out what embroideries I want to digitize for it. Um, so anyway, I, I think a lot of us probably think similar. What do I use for weights? Uh, so I've got, uh, these are, people call these one, two, three blocks or machining blocks, but I call them one, two, three blocks because they are one by uh, two by three inches, which is cool for quick measurements, but they're also like just solid steel. Um, so they're really heavy. And then a friend of mine made me these really cute donut pattern weights out of a bunch of metal washers and polymer clay, but they're actual pattern weights. Um, but I think before I got either of those things, I used to just use whatever random objects I had laying around my house. Um, yeah. I wonder if I missed, you're grouting the tile floor in your new sewing room. Susie, that sounds like a smart idea. Uh, <laughs> I had a couple of local friends come over last night that I hadn't seen in a while since I set up my studio the way it is now. And they were like, oh my God, you're, 
your workshop has really developed since we were last here. And I was kind of looking around like, yeah, it really has. It's, it's funny when you, when you submit to the addiction of uh, sewing or just crafting in general and what it can actually do to your entire lifestyle. And I think most of you are probably able to identify with that. Mm. Hi, Zena from Florida. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> I am trying to get this folded in half properly so I can cut it out. Oh, yeah, I should probably mention a couple of things about knits since we're doing a little bit of a demo for those of you who are not familiar because knits are, in my opinion, much more difficult than working with woven fabrics because they stretch and uh, they move around a little bit. But uh, this is a pretty standard like we'll call it a jersey knit, which most t-shirts are made out of a fabric called jersey knit. And this is a two-way stretch, which means it will stretch this way very well, but not this way very well, which is good because when you're making a t-shirt, you want it to kind of stretch around your body and your arms, but you don't want it to stretch up and down too much. So, you know, it doesn't like lose its shape over time. So anyway, we're using a two-way stretch and I want to make sure that I'm cutting it out the correct orientation so that it stretches around my body properly. That is what we're doing. And this is, I just have this and then the neck band, which I hope I didn't lose that pattern piece. It's somewhere. Um, but and then I will probably end up tailoring the shirt as we're making it to make it fitted because I'm kind of tall and fairly thin. And if I just make a large shirt, it, oh no, this was the pattern I drafted to my own body, so never mind. This will fit me perfectly. I used to use a different pattern, and I'd always have to tailor it, but now I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't tell. Actually, I haven't publicly announced this, and and I have a, a decent audience or following that cares about my updates in life or whatever sometimes, but. Something I have not officially announced is I've decided to move from Dallas, Texas. I currently live in Dallas, Texas, back to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is why I'm wearing my Wisconsin t-shirt that a friend of mine made this for me. Um, so I will be moving back to Milwaukee. And um, as another update, as of yesterday, I sold my house back to the original owners. Um, so I had a very easy transaction by, um, I, I didn't think I'd get that lucky, but, um, oh, wait, I don't know how long the delay is from stream to chat. Uh, I'm used to it being pretty quick, but I, I just explained what pattern weights I was using. So hopefully, or maybe you came in after that. I, I don't know, but, um, in a nutshell, I, I won't tell the whole thing, but these are one, two, three blocks, and these are donut weights, which are actual metal and clay. Um, but yeah, they all work great. Uh, <clears throat> they do kind of look like Legos, though. All right. Um, I found my neck band. So yeah, this is a very simple four-piece pattern. It's just a front, back, sleeve, and neck band. There we go. Oh, you're fine, Zena. You are good. And I hope you're doing something cool today. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about my move back to Wisconsin. I miss my family and I miss the, the Midwest and all the lake country out there. So I'll be looking for houses in the next few weeks because I close on this one pretty soon. <clears throat> oh, wait, I don't need to fold this over. This is the one pattern piece. I just need one single cut of. So for everything else, I need mirror copies. But for this, I just need one single neck band. Um, and I'm not going to like do the whole close up stitch thing, although I do have a camera on my machine. But I will just explain what I'm going to do. And then we'll just do it. And then we'll hang out. And you guys can tell me all about what you're making and how you're feeling this week. Um, I think, 
Yeah, the last broadcast I did, I think I said something. Like, I'm so used to streaming while I'm, like, playing dance music. So I usually, like, dance around and get all hyper. Um, but I don't think I'm allowed to do that here. So I have to try to fill all of these awkward silences that I'm creating by myself. Um, so when you guys chat, it helps me, you know, because I get to see what, what you guys are doing. Hmm. Darlene, it's actually the same process for a men's or women's shirt. A women's t-shirt usually just has a little bit more curves on the torso area. Um, but it's all the same steps. Um, and I've got all my pattern pieces cut out. So now we can actually start talking about how we do construction. And I am done with the fabric. <clears throat> um, yeah. In fact, I actually about... A month or two ago, I actually filmed a video uh, for Brother on how to make a long sleeve t-shirt, which the steps are identical. The, sl the sleeves for this one are just much shorter. Um, so if you need much more guidance and uh, demonstration with knits and uh, the steps of actually making a t-shirt, you can just look up Talk Custom on YouTube. But... There's nothing more fun than making it along with someone, so that's why we're broadcasting it here today. Um, love to dance and jump on my trampoline in the sewing rooms. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to be doing with you guys, but I think I'd get in trouble, um, especially if I if I finish all my projects. I'll play you guys a couple of songs on the piano because why the heck not? Um, I've been teaching myself a few new songs lately, and I have a, I have a piano in here. Um, <clears throat> in my youth, we laid out the pattern pieces all at once to conserve fabric. Um, oh, I, Marion, I actually, I've done this pattern enough times to actually be fairly fabric efficient, but I, I fold it over by the sides instead of down the middle. So I, I was able to, um, do this pretty efficiently in, in my opinion, but I th think I could always do better with stuff like jeans. It's hard because so many of the shapes are so... I mean, jeans have like 14 different pattern pieces and they don't always fit super well on a cut of denim or whatever I'm using. Like the jeans, <laughs> uh, the jeans I'm wearing today, I just made out of like a really bizarre Alexander Henry quilt fabric, uh, which is a lot of people think these are like pajama pants, but no, these, this is a jeans pattern with a zipper and I got pockets and everything. So, um, and if you're wondering why I have a camera that's like waist high, it's, that's where my sewing machine is. So don't worry. I, I don't deliberately have a camera designated for my, Never mind. Uh, anyway, so thank you, Marianne. I, I appreciate that. Uh, what I did is I joined the, and this, this fabric has a right side and a wrong side. So we have the fabrics together on the shoulder seams, right sides together. Um, and we're gonna do a stretch stitch on my uh, brother ST150, which is the heavy duty, I just use it for everything. I do the lightning bolt stitch on both these seams. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And then right after that, I think we go right into doing the sleeves. Okay, here we go. This seems legit, right? And I think this machine is the one that I'm plugged into. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Oh, this is great. I'm so happy that I took the time to set up. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Stretch stitch. Yes. <clears throat> oh, and we are going to be surging all these seams. Because I will probably end up actually wearing this t-shirt because the fabric isn't embarrassing like the last one even though angela seems to really have enjoyed that shirt and everyone else did too actually um i just i guess i haven't been feeling brave enough to wear it outside of the house um you don't use your serger for not oh for knits i i do i just I'm very particular about sewing with knits for whatever reason. Um, I know a lot of people just skip doing the stitch altogether, but um, I really feel like I get cleaner seams when I do 
an actual stretch stitch and then I surge it after. I know it's I'm doing twice the work for really no reason. <clears throat> um, but that is the way that I like to do t-shirts or or just knits in general. Um, all right. This is working. <clears throat> Hello in Southern. Oh my God, it's Crafty Yarn Cat. I recognize that name. How are you doing? Um, something is sounding unusual with my machine. You guys know how that is when you just hear something that sounds a little off and rather than try to risk it, you just want to you know, reset your bobbin or something. I'm getting one of those sounds right now, which is weird, but um, oh my God, Crafty Yarn Cat. When you said hello in Southern, I was thinking like, God, there was someone from my old Twitch channel that used to say that, and it's you. Uh, <laughs> how did you even find me here? Uh, I didn't even, uh, I forgot to, you know, like post it on my Instagram or whatever. And I thought about doing it, but I was like, ah, it's, it's all good. We're, we're hanging out with the, the brother YouTube crew right now. Um, how big is your studio? It's well, it's not a full piano. It's it's an electric piano, which is like a keyboard size. Um, but it is awesome. I I love it. Yeah. So a lot of people when they're watching my videos or my streams are like, oh, I'd love to come by your studio sometime. Or like, where is your storefront? And I'm like, no, this is what should be the living room of my house. Like that's a fireplace. My front door is over there. So when people come over here, they walk in not expecting to walk into a sewing workshop, but that's what happens. Uh, okay, so I forgot to see if this camera setup is good. Uh, I will be using the brand new Brother Airflow 3000 for all of my overlocking on this project, which I'm very excited about because I love this machine. Not only is it super easy to thread, but it's just a great, reliable machine. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to not speak while I'm using it so I don't make a mistake, because when you make a mistake when surging, a lot of times you can't recover from that. So I'm going to focus. What happened that time? Oh. <clears throat> Up, 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 up. There we go. <clears throat> and I'll try to get caught up in chat in a second. I, I'm excited that one of my old school viewers from my original channel showed up here. Uh, for I don't think I've really talked about this much because I'm I've been a brother ambassador for like five, four four years or so. Um, but I I started my brand on something called Twitch Creative, which is a broadcasting platform. And um, and I, I, I streamed on that for like five years full time uh, before I switched over to making tutorial videos on YouTube. Um, and then I started another company because I'm crazy. But um, yeah, I, I had a, a great solid community of people that would watch me every day for like seven hours every day, which is crazy. Um, <clears throat> um, Darlene, I actually don't have an answer to that question. Um, I, all I know is that dealers set their own price, but I don't know what the MSRP is. Um, I, I know what you're talking about, Darlene. I, I didn't think it was that much, but uh, most dealers are, pretty cool about helping work with you on financing and or deals if you do like, you know, service bundles and other stuff like that. So if, if there's someone that you could talk to you about negotiating, I, I think that would probably be a good idea. But every brother dealer I've ever been to anywhere in the country has always been awesome. But that's probably because I'm like a super psycho brother sewing machines fan. Um, no, no. So stitches, I didn't put any stickers on that machine yet because it was loaned to me by a brother dealer actually out of San Diego. And I didn't know if they were going to let me keep it or not because I was doing videos for them with it. 
Um, but after using it for like half an hour, I was like, forget it. I don't even care. I'm just going to, if you're not going to give it to me, I'm going to buy it or I'll just pay for it or something. So I will put stickers on it. I just haven't done it yet. Um, oh, and look, my sister is here in chat. Good to see you, sister. Uh, I won't say your name out loud for the sake of this broadcast being saved for future viewing, but cheers. It feels very natural to have you back here because my sister used to watch me all the time way back in the day. And here we are again, doing it all over again. Hmm. <clears throat> and I was just talking about, I just announced publicly for the first time ever uh, to, you know, a bit of a different audience that I will be, or that I'm selling my house in Dallas and I'm moving back to Wisconsin. So that's, that's the deal. And tell your kiddo, I said, what's up? Cause that, that dude is awesome. I just got to go to Wisconsin, uh, last week and I went to my nephew's middle school graduation, which is awesome. I never got to do anything like that. I don't have my own kids, so I have to, you know, pretend that I can be some kind of a, a an adult figure around my nephew, which is really difficult for me because I'm incredibly immature and he knows that, but we still have a good time. <clears throat> From YouTube, my Facebook feed was freezing. Oh, well, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Peepla7. I always have fun trying to figure out what people's names mean. But yeah, welcome to the, the YouTube feed. I forgot that this is on multiple platforms. I don't know why I forgot that, but I did. Uh, okay, so, oh yeah, I should probably explain what, what's happening over here. That's what happens when I get distracted by people in chat. Um, actually, you know what? I'll explain the next sleeve because I'm already like halfway done with this. And sleeves are in my opinion, the, I don't know, the most technical part of making a t-shirt because you've got two cut curves that you have to mirror in opposite directions and sew them together, which feels very unnatural. Um, but yeah, I'll explain it on the next one. Uh, anyway, when it's pinned together, it should look something like this. Yeah. So that's the seam we're going to be doing, and this is going along the top of the shoulder and around to the armpits on the shirt. <clears throat> People's Lakaya July Baby. Okay. All right. I got it. Thank you for taking the time to explain that. And uh, if you're working on something interesting, please let us know what you're making this week. <clears throat> All right. Um, actually, and someone ask me why I'm not just going right to surging on this. Um, I wonder if I would get better solid results with the airflow. Um, so I could skip doing this stretch stitch right away. I'm not going to test that while I'm streaming because I know I'm going to get a good t-shirt if I do it this way. Um, but that's something I'll do off camera for sure. Lakaya, long sound. Lakaya, K A Y is K, right? We be updating the cheesehead hat. Wait, what do you mean updating it? Will you be updating it? I used to have a bunch. Those things are expensive too. A lot of like you always see those on, you know, Packer football games or when everyone makes fun of Wisconsin. You always see those hats. Those things are not cheap. Um, Maybe it's because I always bought them at the airport because it's like the only place I knew where to get them. Um, yeah, I think the last time I bought one, it was like 60 bucks for a cheese head. And they're solid foam too, so they, they don't fall apart, but yeah, they're, they're a lot. Um, we're using half seam lot. I'm doing uh, uh, the software I designed this pattern on by default had me do a 5A seam allowance, which. I'm comfortable with because most of the patterns that I that are store bought have like I use a lot of Vogue patterns. I don't know if people like those. They don't really even make a lot of patterns anymore 
and they make even less for men's patterns, but they always did five A's. Um, I think the first pattern I ever bought was a Vogue pattern, which is why I have some kind of allegiance to them. And they've got a great pattern for jeans. Uh, okay, let's do the other sleeve. And then I'll search both of them after. And I'll actually try to explain what the heck I'm doing this time. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, Avi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I if I have time, which as of right now, I've got 25 minutes to finish this. If I have extra time, I, I did prepare a, a simple talk custom logo design um, to do a very fast vinyl cut. And then I will heat transfer it if we have time, um, which at the moment I'm moderately optimistic that I'll be able to do that. Okay. So here is what is going to happen. Hopefully I didn't lose my other sleeve. Okay, good. So here is the right side and I know it's the right side cause I can see the outside of my seam here. So I'm going to take that and then I'm going to match up the top topmost part of the center of the sleeve and match it up with the shoulder seam right here, right? Um, <clears throat> then I'm going to pin that. And because this is a stretchy material, uh, it's v that part is very forgiving when you're matching up seams, which is the one of the only good things about working with knits. Um, anyway, so I can go right to pinning where the front part of my armpit will be. And then we will stretch the fabric until it meets up and pin it along that way. So this is where it gets kind of wonky because the fabric just does not want to uh, bend that way. So I have to kind of force it to. So I'm gonna grab it by both the pins I just put there, pull it really tight, and then I will grab it in the middle and pull these so the raw edges are flush with each other pull it with my fingers and then pin it. And that's how I do this all the way around uh, any like curved edges. So one more time, these aren't totally matched up. So I'm just gonna line those up, put a pin there, okay? So that is the whole front half of the sleeve. And then I'll do the same exact thing on the back half. And that's how I do my sleeve seams on actually both wovens and knit fabrics. Doing this on knits is actually easier than wovens because if you don't match it up perfectly with a woven, it will pleat and pucker. And um, thankfully, it's pretty easy to fix. But it's just so much easier to do this with knits. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I think wovens are, are easier. But um, oh, good. Marianne knows Vogue patterns. I Of just all the different pattern making companies, I, I can understand their illustrations the best. Um, I just, whoever they, they got on staff that's doing the design work and illustrations is just on fire because I just understand it. And thankfully I've been sewing long enough now where I don't really need to even see that stuff unless it's a really new technique for me. But, um, yeah, when you're brand new at sewing and you're looking at your first pattern, just scratching your head, like, what the hell are they trying to tell me to do here? Um, I remember those days. Those, those were interesting. Okay. So, all right. Sounds good. Crafty, thank you so much for coming in. To um, I will try to make a, a return to Twitch at some point, but for now, I'm having a good time. So, anyway, that is our sleeve seam. I'm going to do my stretch stitch on my heavy duty machine real quick. And then we will surge both of those. And there we go with that. <laughs> so uh, I was talking earlier about uh, when, when I broadcast on my own channel, uh, people got, I think, just so used to me sewing every day that at, after a very short amount of time, um, people stopped talking about sewing altogether. So it would, it just turned into like this social hangout where I would just sit there and tell jokes and dance and make stuff. And uh, it just, it took on its own kind of personality of just whatever random conversation came up. Um, and I really miss doing that. I, I did it for so many years. 
So broadcasting feels very natural to me. But what does... Oops. Uh, yeah, you guys can make fun of me for not taking my pins out while I'm sewing. Um, what doesn't feel natural to me is actually trying to teach during a live broadcast because I get so distracted, which is why I started doing YouTube tutorials because I could edit it properly so that you couldn't see how scatterbrained I am when I'm streaming live. Uh, so that is the fun part of what we're doing. Um, yeah, my sister who's watching, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. But people would be like, oh, how do you do a, you know, a zipper pocket or a, a welt pocket or something? And I'd like start explaining it and then just get totally lost in some other conversation about cheese heads or I don't know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but that's that's part of the fun. Um, so anyway, we've got both of our uh, let's do this. <clears throat> uh, question. Do do it have to be on a serger? Oh, uh, I, so you can overlock with a regular machine because not everyone has a serger. In fact, I don't recommend anyone get a serger unless they plan on taking their hobby to the next level. Or if you're selling stuff, or even if you're like giving clothes away to friends, like you want it to be a little bit more polished. And I think the cheapest sergers you can get are maybe like 250 or 300 bucks or something like that. Or you can get a used one for like a hundred bucks because they usually last for forever. But um, yes, uh, anyway, sorry. There goes me getting carried away. Uh, you can achieve an overlock with a regular sewing machine by just doing a zigzag stitch over the edge. And I'll try to demonstrate it if I can get my camera to work correctly. Um, you know what? I'd have to do it right now because I'm about to do one. So can I actually achieve? Yeah, this might be hard. I, I have a video where I actually showed on my t-shirt video. If, if you watch it on YouTube, I do a close up. I'm not going to be able to get that camera over here. I'm sorry. But you just do it. So zigzag, you stitch the left is on the fabric. And then when it stitches on the right, it's off the fabric and it will lock up the, the edges. One good thing about most knit fabrics is they don't fray. So you don't really have to, but if you want it to look really polished, then you could. One second. This machine is noisy, so I don't know if you can actually hear me over it. I always go a few inches at a time. So I don't accidentally ruin this. God, this machine is so fun to use. Um, it's so fast, too. Uh, but yeah, after after having not streamed for so long and then coming back and doing this stuff with Brother Live, it really brings back a lot of good feelings and memories and makes me want to do this more often. And I used to do this five days a week. Um, so who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll get back into it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so after this, I'm trying to figure out what my next steps are. Um, oh, we're going to do the neck band. Yeah. In fact, we only have like, I think, three more stitches left on this whole shirt. And then, like, a couple of hems. What the heck just happened? Oh, okay. Oh, I apparently got tangled up with a spool of thread, which I guess that happens. Um, noise machine ASMR. Yeah, when we did, I did a serger demo, uh, and it was right when the, the air threading serger came out. People were very enthusiastic about that machine. Um, I'd give up my sewing machine before I'd give up my serger. Really? Uh, well, Connie, depending on what you make, like uh, I, I showed this off earlier. Forgive me if, if you already saw this, but I, I finished this a few days ago and I don't use a serger on any parts of this because all of the seams are hidden within the lining. So I wouldn't, I would absolutely keep my, um, my sewing machines 
and my embroidery machines before whatever. Anyway, you get the idea. But uh, I like making bags. These are these are a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Kelly, you hadn't seen that um, video. I think you saw a picture of it, maybe. But yeah, that thing is pretty sweet. Okay, so this is where we're at with the shirt. I'm going to hold, or I'm going to lay it out this way. <clears throat> so this is the shirt before we do the side seams. So we've got the front panel is down here, joined by this, the shoulder seams going to the back, and then we just sewed our sleeves on this won't lay flat because this is you know built to drape over a human body um such as myself so that's the flattest i can really get it to lay but what we're looking for right now is the neck hole right here and i'm going to prepare the neck band and the way this works is this is slightly smaller than my actual neck measurement uh, but it will stretch kind of when we put it on um, so I have to just fold this in half, right sides together, and we're going to just do a stretch stitch. I don't even have to serge this because it gets hidden, but I, this is like two inch stitch right here that I'm going to do um, with the stretch stitch. Every single stitch I do with knits is always pretty much a stretch. Um, <clears throat> you see the cross. What cross? Peepla. I hope you don't mind that I'm pronouncing it Peepla. Oh, wait, the cross of the shirt? Is that what you're suggesting? I think I know what you're talking about. All right, here we go. Okay. And then, how do I do this? Oh, I didn't, uh... oh yeah, I can use my iron. I've got a little <clears throat> portable pad here. That neck hole appears small. Um... It might, but I've made, I think, four or five shirts with this pattern so far, and they've they've all... Actually, it's a little bit bigger than, like, this t-shirt would be. Um, and I know that specifically, I, and it's a pretty shallow reason, too. I got a big tattoo on my back um, a couple of months ago, and I wanted a shirt with a little bit wider of a, a neck hole so that you could just see a little bit of the top of it when I put my hair up. Um, when I wear one of my handmade t-shirts. So I, I know it's a little bit bigger than a typical shirt, but maybe on camera it looks small. Um, <clears throat> oh, if you lay a shirt out correctly, it will, yeah. And I think when I'm doing like a button down shirt, that usually lays a little flatter because the front is open where the buttons go, but. Oh wait, I should probably explain what is happening. See, you guys have to hold me accountable. Otherwise I'm just gonna go completely on my own tangent. Here we go. All right. So now we've got this very nice stretchy hoop of fabric that has a seam right here. And I'm not going to surge this, but I'm going to just trim this so it's a little less bulky. Um, about half of that seam allowance. And then I'm going to fold this in half uh, lengthwise. And I'm doing this so the wrong sides are together so that we see the, the nice part of the fabric on the outside. And I'm just gonna kind of line up the edges all the way around. I don't need to pin this, but we're gonna iron it so it holds its shape. And then I'm just gonna baste it shut with a, with a long stretch stitch. And then we're gonna sew it onto the shirt. Um, oh, I've only got 11 minutes left. Okay, we're not gonna have time to heat transfer vinyl, but I will be able to finish the shirt for sure. I just, I gotta step it up a little bit. I was getting carried away with all the social elements of this broadcast, which is fine. Um, I think, so yeah, when I did the t-shirt demo on one of our dealer's streams, I did a long sleeve shirt, but I only had 30 minutes and I was able to finish it somehow and put on the shirt by the end of the stream within 30 minutes, barely. It was like on the dot. And Angela was hosting that as well. So she remembers, but um, anyway, I'm going <laughs> to step up the speed a little bit. <clears throat> oh, Cindy, you remembered my my fancy scissors. No, I'm not using, there's, the scissors are too hardcore for such a delicate project. If I have time, I'll show those off in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna just baste this raw edge shut as close as I can to the edge so that those stitches get hidden when we end up surging all of this. 
Um, yeah, Cindy, I'm impressed. The, I didn't realize there was enough people that remembered me from previous brother broadcast. That's really kind of cool, actually. Um, okay, so this will take a minute, but I'm going to start at the center seam, and we're just going to baste all the way around. And this doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to keep the fabric together long enough for me to get it onto the shirt. In fact, I might have been able to skip this step altogether, but this is me being thorough. Uh, if I have to skip doing the hems, I might just do that after the stream, depending on how much time we have. Although, I doubt that anyone would be seriously angry with me if I went over by like a couple of minutes. But I'll still try to be on time. Okay. Anyway. All right. Now, this is me hustling now. Okay. So, the way this works is we're going to sew the neck ribbing to the outside, which might seem counterintuitive, but this is the actual process. Um, and someone actually gave me a good pointer. I don't know why I never did this before, but they said, shouldn't you put the seam of the neck band on like one of the shoulder seams so it's a little less noticeable? And I was like, that is really smart. I don't know why I never did that before. So I'm going to do that on this shirt. Um, I'm going to try to trim some of these threads. <clears throat> Well, we'll see who's whoever's in charge of this thing. I mean, this thing could go off, off the rails at any moment. All right. So I'm going to line up the seam of the neck band with my, you know what, I'll do it on this shoulder seam. So it's on my left shoulder. And I'm just matching up the raw edges of the neck band to the raw edges of the hole in the center of the shirt. Um, and then... I might actually just skip the, no, no, that's fine. I don't want to surge this because if it's not a tight enough stitch, you're going to see colored thread through the seam. So whatever. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. So what I want to do is fold this in half. So I know where the center of the other side is. And then I'm going to kind of roll this around. Wait, 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 hold on. I'm getting all twisted up here. Okay. So here's the other half. And I'm going to roll this around this way. And I'm going to pin the opposite side. I know I didn't do a great job of explaining what I just did there, but I want to make sure that this is equal all the way around. So I'm pinning the opposite side of this. So it's equidistant, uh, if that makes any sense. Anyway, now that I've got two side points, I can pull this tight, find my centers, and match them up, pin them, and then we're just going to stitch in a big circle all the way around. And I've got six minutes to do my neck band and two side seams, which we're going we're gonna to make that happen. And I will be wearing this shirt in six minutes, whether it's finished or not, somehow. Come on, fabric. <laughs> Please behave. Okay. I'm going to be really slow. I'm not even going to pin anymore. Normally I do like eight pins, but we're just going to do four. Okay, here we go. I'm, I'm doing this. I quarter the neck bit. Yeah, I, I normally do, but um, I'm not always under, you know, sewing under a, a, a time uh, deadline, or at least like during a broadcast is... Uh, Maybe a little unnatural because sewing is one of those great hobbies that you could just take your time. You know, some projects I'll just spend a whole week doing because I'm enjoying it so much. Um, anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm going to skip the surge for now on this just so I can finish the shirt on time, which is fine with me. Uh, so for this, I am kind of pulling the fabric in the back as well as the front. Because I want this to be really clean. And if I don't do that, sometimes the fabric will pleat or pucker. This will give me a nice smooth seam all the way around the neckline. Um, all right. Five minutes. 
<laughs> I wonder if, well, actually, anyone was watching, like, how the hell is this dude going to finish this thing on time? Oh, no, this is not, this is not equal at all. All right, well, we're just going to do it anyway. The... <laughs> I'm going to get a big pleat on the shoulder, uh, or it's just going to pucker like crazy. Darn it. <laughs> uh, the uh, t-shirt the I made in my tutorial video with the green uh, jersey knit fabric turned out perfect because I wasn't under a rush. Um, also, I wasn't crazy distracted by myself and whatever, but it's fine. All the steps are, are the are the same and if if you're desperate to learn i i'm very proud of the tutorial video that i've made on how to make a t-shirt anyway um <laughs> so, <laughs> this is gonna be really bad when it's done anyway um but okay so all i'm doing is i'm turning the raw edge of the seam to the inside so the outside looks actually that doesn't look as bad as i thought that's how it looks on the outside and normally i would top stitch it so it holds the seam down after i serge it but we're just going to skip that for now oh the pleat is at my center front it's going to be right on my chest well oh, that's terrible i'll fix this later but anyway let's pretend this is the front because it looks much cleaner um <laughs> Yes, Darlene, I know. I'm not even gonna pin this last part. We're just gonna we're just gonna baste the side seams shut. I won't even have time to put this on, but now I'm just folding this, so I'll pin a I'll put three pins. I'm gonna pin the armpit first. We're gonna be sloppy. Um, use the correct terms. I I think I'd I mean I know what I'm doing. I'm just Pay more attention to you guys than my own project right now, which is not really a great idea when you're trying to teach, but um, we're all having a good time, right? All right. So that is pinned enough for me to, to do the stitch. Oh, yeah. I got two and a half minutes. This is... Pfft, forget about it. This is going to be a breeze. Okay. <laughs> Even though this shirt is <laughs> terrible... I love this fabric though. It's super soft. <clears throat> I think it's just, uh, it, this fabric is a little stretchier than, oh, no, no, I'm not trying to make excuses actually. Never mind. The fabric is perfect. I, I'm just, I'm screwing around too much. Okay, so I've got the side and sleeve seams pinned and now we're just gonna stitch all the way up and this shirt will be done. Perfect. <clears throat> all right. And if anyone's just walking into chat right now as we're coming to the end of this project, uh, sorry, you just missed a riveting. <laughs> uh, I, I'll say it was a mediocre attempt at teaching. Oh no, what is happening now? Uh, there's some kind. Of, oh, there it goes. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> sewing with knits during a live broadcast is maybe, for me at least, maybe not a wise choice. Although I did it once before, and it went super well with the stupid cloud t-shirt that I made. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'll be thinking about this for a few hours after we're done here today, but we are going to finish this and it's going to look just fine. <laughs> Thank you guys for putting up with me, by the way. This is really fun for me. Uh, okay. So I've got about one minute to finish my last scene and then we'll be done. I think Angela is going to just let us get away with one on this on this stream here. Okay. So, starting at the bottom. <clears throat> I'm sitting here wondering, how the hell did I finish a long sleeve t-shirt in half an hour on the other one, but I didn't even do this one in a whole hour, but whatever. And sorry, for, when I'm sitting here, I can't read chat very well on the computer because my camera's in the way. So after this, I'll get caught up and we will all celebrate the success of this hilarious shirt. Actually, no, I'll just show you one of my other shirts that actually looks good. That'll be fine. But yeah, all I have to do is just fix the, the neckband on this. That's easy. And then I'll do some vinyl decals. And it'll be great. All right.
Okay. And at exactly 12 o'clock on the dot, central time at least, uh, I am finished with this shirt. Stop the clock. Um, technically speaking, I did finish making a t-shirt on time, if we're being technical about it. So all I have to do is just turn this right side out. And poof, the t-shirt is done. And uh, construction-wise, it is fine. This is the back because I'm trying to hide the, the big giant pleat in the front. <laughs> But... It looks good, Chris. It looks good. I was sitting here watching going, okay, we're getting closer in the time, closer in the time. I was watching, though. I was enjoying it. Okay, good. Um, that was, I, I, okay, that was actually really fun. Um, I like putting myself in awkward situations. I, I think it's actually kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but... uh, there was a lot of people saying they love that serger, and you're using the airflow, right? Yeah, I I really am happy. Um, I think I, I mentioned that the, the machine was loaned to me by the dealer in San Diego that we work with, and I liked it so much. I was like, I'm not giving this back. So if you know, just tell me how much I need to pay you to keep this thing. And <laughs> they're like, we'll work something out. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I, I, I get to keep that. So I'm happy. So now you can start stickering it up. <clears throat> yes. And I've got a ton of stickers I've been saving up. Um, but for whatever reason, I'm never going to put any stickers on the on the 10 needle. I just I feel like that would deface such a beautiful piece of equipment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do it with that. Um, oh, hey, this was a great tutorial. There was a ton of chat. Hey, hi to your sister, by the way. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, my sister is super and cool. <clears throat> so I was listening to you saying, I don't have any kids, so I'm going to go back. And, and I, I don't either, by the way. And I just had nine of my nieces and nephews at my house this weekend. So, Chris, I'm going to give you a tip. When you move back, if you have, like, any of the kids come over, I don't know how many nieces and nephews you have, but I did a table outside. <laughs> and it was a big table and had five kinds of ice cream and let them turn it into a Sunday. Well, let's just say it was a fiasco. But guess what? The birds came and ate the leftovers. No oh, cleanup. Wow. <laughs> and that's, uh, I think when you're an aunt or an uncle, you're allowed to be a bad influence and just give kids a bunch of sugar and let the parents <laughs> deal with the aftermath, right? That's kind yeah. of, that's what we get to get away with. And then we go home and we sleep like babies while, yeah. You, you, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. That is but, so true. Yeah, that's so really true. fun. For, and now my nephew's like 14. So like we get to actual, we get like cool chats and he's, you know, got, <laughs> complex ideas and it's really fun to see his brain develop into an adult um anyway that's a whole different conversation but it, it is nice. it is really fun so yeah this, so this is great this was fun uh there's still more chat going on but you all you can find chris i have the websites below first of all don't forget about brother sews they yes. have two blogs crafting and sewing they've got a ton of stuff on there including free design of the month don't forget to grab that before the end of the month and then you've got Chris Talk, which is talkcustom.com. You can yep. find myself at angelawolf.com. And always you can find the Brother shows every Tuesday and Thursday at noon. And thanks to Brother for bringing Thursdays back. I think everybody was like, whoa, we're so used to this. Bring it back. And they did. So, Oh, cool. Kudos to you, Brother. Well, and I, I love doing these. Um, so as long as you guys are happy to have me, I, I will keep coming back and actually I'll, I'll put a little bit more effort into the next one. But um, I, I, I want to ask you briefly, am I going to see you in August? I hope so. Okay. In Austin? Yeah. Uh, is it in Austin this year? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was in Tennessee again. Okay. That's funny because I'll be leaving Texas that month to move to Wisconsin and then coming right back for that. Which is fine. Wow, that's that'll be great. I've lived in Austin twice, so it's a great city. I heard it's um, a great place. It is, yeah. And thank everyone in chat for watching and supporting this channel and all of us. This is always like we're doing this with and for you guys, uh, which which is terrific. So if you have any questions, reach out to me, reach out to Angela or any of the other ambassadors. Like uh, Nephi did his thing yesterday with you, right? He is yeah, that was incredible. Cool. Um, the gowns and the dresses that he makes are fantastic. Like he does work for Disney. Um, I know he just starts with like itsy bitsy things and then it turns into these beautiful gowns. It's oh, amazing. He's, and he's such a sweet person. So a anyway, all the, all the ambassadors that I got to meet last year at, at our gathering, it, it was 
incredible of not just incredible artists, but wonderful people that are so kind to each other and hardworking. And it's, and Angela, you're, you're right there with everyone. It, it's so fun to see the oh, we love it. they're putting together for all of us. Um, we love it. And we have the best machines. We're a little biased because we're brand ambassadors. Yeah, there's that too, but we're also enthusiasts. Yes. Um, All right. Well, Chris, thank you so much. And brother, I see you in the chat as well. Brother social team, if you have questions, keep them rolling and they will send you links to different blog posts and things like that. <laughs> and in the meantime, happy sewing and thank you for letting us take over your page. Chris, have a yeah. great weekend. You too. Thank you. Have a good uh, rest of the week, everyone. And we'll see you on the next show. Sounds good.